This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Why hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to a long overdue video. Doing a bunch of ketchup these days apparently. This is the diet review for Earthrise, Ironhide, and Prowl 2 pack. Two figures in which I've heaped praise upon praise on these molds of other characters quite a while ago, and it has been quite some time since then, so let's see if they still hold up a year later. Now, first thing eagle-eyed viewers may notice is these aren't exactly stock. So, a bit of time travel photography, and there. This is how the Ironhide and Prowl 2-pack shifts to us in the first place, and, uh... Yikes. Like, wow, what do you say about these two figures? They're kind of... well... <sighs> They're definitely not the shining example of either of their molds, I can say that much. More so one than the other. Like, here's Prowl, and this is actually a mold I really enjoy. As such, whether I wanted to or not, I've ended up collecting every release of it so far. My complaints earlier about it not being the shining example doesn't so much apply here, but there are certain bits that I really don't like. The wheel hubs, for instance. I've gone on continuously about my disdain for this cheap wheel-on-peg setup, and on Prowl especially, it looks genuinely awful, with the white making a stark contrast with the black wheel. The headlights are the same translucent blue that was cast for the windshield, and while the blue certainly looks a lot better than just straight clear for the windshield, the headlights do tend to suffer for it. This, of course, is all subjective, and if you like this for whatever reason, more power to you. I, on the other hand, am more than happy to fix all of this, and therefore I have. The wheels are an easy replacement designed by Robot78, and the files purchased from JRC Design Store. I printed them myself and painted them black with silver detailing, and man if that doesn't give it that little extra touch. The headlights are my own design though, and they give that little extra retro design flair. As for the rest of the car though, I find it rather plain. You get a tampographed Autobot symbol on the hood, and the word police on the doors, and thankfully you also get painted taillights, which I'll admit I'm pretty happy they went at least this far. On the last version of Prowl, you had to paint it yourself if you wanted any semblance of a taillight. But that's basically it, and the only reason I can possibly fathom for this is tune accuracy, or maybe budgetary reasons or something, I'm not entirely sure. I get some people aren't all up on the realism look and prefer the clean tune aesthetic, but I personally kind of miss all the bits and bobs the G1 stickers gave him, with the highway patrol, or the badging, or what have you. Ah, oh, well, that's what Toy Hacks is for. Anyway, nitpicking aside, it's still a great representation of Prowl, like a proper Earth update to the Siege one that came out two years ago. Color placement is on point and makes more sense on the Earth placement than the Cybertronian one. A fun little detail they put into the car is the windshield wiper orientation denotes a right-hand drive configuration, which complements the Japanese police car livery. So yeah, Prowl still holds up. I still love this mold. It looks great with the other Datsuns, especially Barricade, and even just some minor tweaks can really make this vehicle shine. So then, Ironhide. Ironhide is awful. I recall when I first got Ratchet that my thoughts were more or less, all right, it's a solid attempt to make it what it is, and probably budget restrictions left the feet unfinished, and what we got was pretty good, all things considered. I gotta say, thank goodness I got Ratchet in hand first, because if I was handed Ironhide first, I may have very well not even bothered trying to fix the feet, because this is just terrible. Like, okay, sure, he's the Nissan C120 more or less, and that's great, but this is just about as bad in terms of jank panel lines as that nonsense that came out nearly a decade ago, parts are going everywhere, nothing's lining up, little of it is actually sitting flush with itself, and to top it all off, we have three different colors of red going on here. One of those colors is painted, but two of them are cast that way. Like, what the heck? And that doesn't even address the fact that due to the mold, the shoulders, which need to be black for robot mode, do more to stand out here in an awful way than Ratchet's did, as at least they were the same color as the body. And then, yeah, to beat a dead horse on this, the wheels are still the alien wheels. And more importantly, the feet are just left as the sage bits as the worst example of a vehicle tail I've ever seen. What makes this even worse is that it appears that there's evidence that redesigned feet were on the table in the first place, as the top of the back window has been molded into the roof, and for Ironhide it's even painted. Speaking of windows, in general, those are molded in non-pigmented clear plastic, which I think just adds to the ugly factor. 
I genuinely hope that one day we get to a point where they stop using this material. And this figure is probably the best example as to why you should stop doing that. I mean, you get your side windows, which are cast in red and credit where credit is due. That's fairly accurate to the C120. Then it hits a part cast in clear where the color shift is so jarring it makes your head spin. The cast port to help with the window placement and shield mode sticks out like a sore thumb. And aside from that, all you see through this clear is non-vehicular robot junk. Which brings us up to the windshield and front windows in which, again, all you see is robot junk and all of that aside, the fact there's clear at all has amplified the fragility of this hinge here and many are reporting cracking on this joint specifically. <sighs> Man, that was a lot of negativity, I'm not going to lie there. Long story short, this attempted Ironhide kind of blows. It's obvious an attempt was made and that real effort has been applied to make it what it is, and I do still genuinely question if budget constraints were at play here, but man if Ironhide doesn't fare way worse in this forced earth mode than Ratchet does. Anyway, that red bothered me enough that I tried to fix it, and this is the result. I tore down the figure and base coated it in candy apple red. Then I printed out water slides and covered up all the windows with a tinted gradient that I'm not ashamed to admit is totally Toy Hacks inspired, as well as striping and other details. And then I replaced the wheels and feet with earth mode replacements I designed. My windshield broke because of the terrible clear plastic design, so I had to completely reverse engineer a new one, and while I was at it, I mirrored the piece to be right hand drive, because I'll admit, small nitpick, it is something that bugs me about the original design. The wipers are for a left hand drive vehicle, but the passenger bar door is for a right hand drive vehicle. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's something I noticed and therefore fixed. And finally, I redesigned the piece that attached to the windshield to the main body so that it goes from an unfinished round piece in a contrasting color to a functional piece that actually looks like it's part of the design in the first place. The piece works with existing hardware if you're comfortable popping pins, so feel free to download that if you're interested. Anyway, that's all I did. It's not perfect, as my clear coat decided to crackle in certain places and I can't for the life of me figure out why, and it doesn't save the vehicle from being a cobbled together mess, but at least it's a consistently cobbled together mess. And to add to that, the windows of which further my point, the translucent plastic needs to go. This looks significantly better than this. Like, why waste paint trying to match cast plastic, when there's a high likelihood you're not going to do it in the first place, when you can spend that paint budget on cool looking windows with parts that will last a lot longer? Whether those windows be a gradient like my Ironhide, or a solid metallic blue like my Ratchet. Anyway, at the end of the day, modifications or not, I can't stress enough how much Ironhide has sort of ruined any goodwill I had towards the Earth redesign. I used to be semi-optimistic that a little TLC could save an otherwise incomplete mold when I just had Ratchet, but like, eh, this thing just sucks. Take something as simple as accessories. Back in Siege, Ironhide got a rocket launcher that doubled as a hammer. No clue if that was a reference or anything, but it was really cool regardless. Ratchet got a bunch of medical supplies and the G1 rocket launcher. Also really cool and fun to mess about with. The Earthrise versions get the rest of the alt mode and... The G1 Toy Blaster, but with a circle rotated 90 degrees. Oh yay. Fun fact though, these guns could peg into the interior of their roof for onboard weapon storage. That is a cool thing and definitely worth mentioning. But that aside, I feel like there's another sacrifice that was made so that we could have a big Slava roof, and that's having these in a two-pack at all. Like as of now, there are only three versions of this mold out there, and all of them, in order to get them, are some sort of special case to buy. Guard comes in a special box, and at least here in Canada, is a dollar extra when compared to other deluxe class figures. Ratchet and Ironhide are packed into two deluxes that I feel in one case was cheaply made to begin with, and the other one is being cranked out like candy in terms of mold reuse, and both packs are priced at the rate of two deluxe figures. So that's kind of my theory. Maybe the only way to actually acquire these figures without charging more was to bundle them with cheaper figures, giving more headroom for the roof slab or something. But again, that's just a theory. That, or maybe they knew it was awful in the first place and bundled Ironhide with a must-have figure or something. All right, Simmons, what do you got for me this year? All right, so last year was a huge success. People bought our Prowl like it was going out of style. The limited select smokescreen runs sold out and people on the internet made three times more than us through scalping Blue Streak on eBay that we made selling it through retail. Wait, people are willing to spend how much on our toys? Kind of gives me an idea for later. Anyway, what do you got for me this year? Okay, so you know how we have R&D working on forcing Ironhide and Ratchet into an Earth mode? <laughs> yeah, 
be a miracle if they can pull that one off. <laughs> sure will be. All right, so I was thinking of guaranteeing its sale by bundling with Earthrise Prowl. Brilliant idea. That'll ensure we sell both. That new Prowl mode looks like it's gonna be a big seller this year. Yeah, I thought so too. And that's why I thought that instead of making it a wide release for the mass public, we should limit it to just Amazon and make it an exclusive. And then we could take a page in a Nintendo books and short supply the release, driving up demand artificially. Mmm, yes, yes, then we can really see how much people will pay for our figures. The data we collect alone for 2021 could make us millions in 2022! Alright, so how about the other Datsuns? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. People were upset about the limited run last year, so he's going to be mass retail. The loose streak and expected high demand I figure should be upgraded from a one-off subline to an exclusive release. Barricade sold like No Tomorrow in Siege, so I figure he should get the same treatment as Prowl, and we'll bundle it with a recolored figure from our Power of the Primes line. That way we can charge a little extra for a figure we already have a mold for. Simmons, you absolute madman! What's your salary? Whatever it is, I'll pay whoever much a scalper makes on top of that! Anyway, as for size comparison, here they are with Kingdom Sideswipe, Earthrise Trailer Breaker, and Selects Bug Bite. Kingdom Inferno, and Earthrise Optimus. As for trailer functionality, Prowl can squeeze himself into Prime's trailer, though just barely, and can definitely fit into Prime's trailer. Unfortunately, Ironhide can't fit into Prime's trailer due to the height restrictions of the Bison-inspired turbine trailer. There, you happy I said it. Now how about the actual scale? Based on the Fairlady 240Z dimensions, Prowl is 135 scale. This puts him in scale with Earthrise Runamuck, or Runabout, as well as, somewhat surprisingly, Kingdom Megatron. Things that are nearly in scale are the following 136 scale alt modes, such as the Studio Series Dinobots, Dino, Trax, Prime, Cliff Jumper, and Combiner Wars GTRs. As for Ironhide, he comes in the 132 scale, much like Rodimus was, so again, scale with RTS, Jazz, and Trax. So that was Ironhide and Prowl. I still like the Nissan mold. It's great! However, I have a newfound disdain for the Nissan mold. It kinda sucks. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. To transform the Datsun mold, start by opening up the doors. Fold up the arms and pull them apart. Rotate down the feet. Rock the windshield and whole front of the car forward to give clearance for the legs, and then extend them. Separate the legs. Flip the heel down and rotate around this panel. Rotate at the waist. On the hood, fold down the hood scoop. Move the hood over the head like your Datsun is getting dressed for the day and slot the hood scoop into the chest. Take the shoulder joints and tap them into the armpits to lock it all together. Rotate the arms down. And if everything was done right and it's all aligned correctly, there's small notches on the doors that will rest on side view mirrors. Start by opening up the windshield, pull these windows up and remove the roof section. Then from there it's pretty much the same thing for both figures. Open up the leg panels, move the arms up, swing the side panels around, separate the legs and fold the upper leg panels down. If you printed my set of feet, the rear windows will rotate inwards to form toes. Open up the bumper, rotate around the front section. Put the arms to the side and rotate them down. Move the bumper up to lock the shoulder in place, then rotate the neck up into the front of the vehicle to lock the bumper in place, and finally plug the windshield to the tabs in the chest. On the roof of the Earthrise version, fold in the windows and slide this peg down, and you're done. So here we are at robot mode where things aren't nearly as dreary as vehicle mode. Still not great, but definitely not as bad. Like Ironhide, for all the sacrifices made in the vehicle, actually cleans up fairly well. The carryover feet definitely do look good for a robot mode, and the shoulders are nice and blocky, and, uh, yeah. Uh, he's good. It's about all the praise I can muster. As for negatives, I rather despise that chunk of grey hanging out there. It just looks so out of place, and the clear window just looks real lame. It doesn't pop as a windshield belly like I did for Ratchet. It doesn't feel like any embodiment of Ironhide either. It just all kind of blends together as one weird chest thing, and it doesn't look good. On the flip side, making all the vehicle upgrades makes the chest look a hundred times better, but at the cost of making all this blue show up for the robot legs. I personally don't mind this, as the windows are there, so the windows are there, and therefore they should be blue. But in general, no, it's not accurate, and I get that. It's like, honestly, you can't win with this figure. You may have one good-looking mode, but you may not have two good-looking modes. And for most people, they want the robot looking good, so that's what gets priority but I feel like this mold just misses out entirely on the point of it being able to transform and just... Nah, I don't like this thing anymore. I mean, I guess one positive for this figure, though, it has a nice clean back. In general, nothing's hanging off of it in weird, kibbly ways. 
I mean, it can. It's got a parts-formed roof and yada yada. Again, Siege did it better, which is such a shame. Because this took so much work to actually obtain these figures. Like Siege was just walking into a store and buying it. Great. Earthrise was having to find some hidden backdoor link and hoping it worked for Canada, and then having to wait an additional 8-9 to nine months for the pre-order to even show up in the first place, and then you had half the people's orders just outright cancelled, and the weird part is it was like that for nearly every Earth mode overhaul. Why is that? Like, nearly every one of these was easily found in store. You just walked in, you found it in stock, you handed over money, and you got a figure, with the exception of maybe Blue Streak. And then Earth Mode, we were met with two packs of characters we didn't want just to get what we did, unannounced exclusive that just showed up and were gone almost instantly, upgraded packs with accessories that some of us didn't even want, shipping delays, etc, 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 which leaves us with Prowl. Prowl has the benefit of being one of the best deluxe modes in all of Earthrise. He looks fantastic in both modes, and is a lot of people's favorite character. Again, I don't know why this was looked to as a really hard to obtain exclusive. This is just one of those characters that everyone wants, so why is Wheeljack getting a third round of retail, but Prowl is locked to this two-pack that got such a limited release? Anyway, as for updates I did to it, aside from the already covered vehicle upgrades, I swapped the Earthrise with the Siege Head. Pigs are almost the same, but that did leave the Siege figure with a loose neck joint. It's a small, semi-unnecessary change, however, I just felt that the new Earthrise head was just much better suited for the younger-feeling Blue Streak character, and that's for either of the releases. Otherwise, there's nothing really new here to talk about. I love how clean the back of the robot is, with the defined point for the doors to rest. I think the choice to cast the entire shin in clear was really stupid, but given how thick the plastic is, I imagine it'll last longer than most. That being said, I painted the sides white to conceal it a little more, and the general hollowness of the foot doesn't quite bug me, but yeah, I do wish something better could have been done here. And that's Prowl. He looks like Prowl. He feels like Prowl. He even smells like Prowl. He's one of the best deluxe molds of Earthrise, and if scalper prices weren't so dang high, I would absolutely wish this release upon everyone. As for accessories, Ironhide gets a big ol' shield in the most egregious case of parts forming, however it also has these extendo barrels for quad blasting action. And he also has a 3mm compatible blaster that is painted gunmetal grey in some certain areas, which is kind of surprising. I will admit it does look pretty good in this paint application. Prowl, along with the light bar, comes with his rifle, and that's kind of it. For cartoon accuracy's sake, this is fine. However, if you have the toy reference purist, you can either reuse the Siege ones, or preferably you can probably just snag a set off Silver Streak. He's pretty cool that way. Articulation features a rotating head and a ball joint with a wide range of movement in the tilt department as well. Even the smokescreen head mold is a good range, as well as the siege swapped head. Again, you compare that to siege and it's just no contest. Arm joints that go out, elbows bend more than 90 degrees without looking weird at the elbow, rotated the bicep, rotated the hand, and rotated the shoulder. Waist rotation, legs go all the way out, and a little bit back and ridiculously far forward. Like that is a kick if I ever saw one. Thighs rotate, and the knees bend like no tomorrow. Feet have an insane range in forward and backward movement as well as an ankle tilt. Like, it's absolutely nuts how far this deluxe figure can move. It's crazy! Articulation features a ball-jointed head that's mainly for rotation and some side-to-side -side movement. Up and down is negligible. Shoulder rotation and outward movement with full bicep swivel and 90-degree bend, and a wrist swivel, waist swivel, full hip movement, forward, backward, and out, with swivel and knee bend at 90 degrees. Proportions are such that he can't kneel super well, full ankle movement with full spread bridge, and printed foot assembly grants toe articulation. As for size comparison, here's Prime, Hoist and Grapple, Grimlock and Slag, Jazz Wheeljack and Sideswipe, and finally, Cliff Jumper, Huffer, and Bumblebee. And man, they really do round out your Season 1 cast, don't they? Whether that's with official figures, or with official figures but you're missing gears. Come on, Hasbro, make it happen! As for scale, here's the 132 and 33 bots, which I find kind of funny considering how everyone complains that Ironhide is just way too dang small, and yet Ironhide turns into the miniest of minivans. Of course he's going to be a little bit bigger, but not by all that much in the car bots. So honestly, this is kind of funny to see. And here's the 135 and 136 scale robots. So that was the Ironhide and Prowl 2-pack. At the time, I could easily recommend it as a lame Ironhide, but the definite must buy Prowl. But now... Goodness, no! Prowl is absolutely the highlight of the set, 
even stock, but Ironhide, especially stock, is not worth the price they're asking. Like, I like collecting the odd Diaclone release, and yet I'm still skipping Guard despite the overabundance they have here in Moncton. Maybe on sale I'll pick this up, but definitely not full price. I just really do not like this mold anymore, and I'm super hoping that the rumored Studio Series 86 Ironhide and Ratchet coming up are going to be better than just a re-released Earthrise outing. Though, it wouldn't surprise me if it was. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow. Ah!